Hi, I'm Ted Robinson, and uh, my website is tedrobinson.com. Pretty simple. You'll be able to find any additional information you need there. But today I'm going to talk to you about resistance to change. One of the things I've noticed as an EFT practitioner is that there's a lot of resistance to change in people. Most of the time, people say they want to change, but the reality is they don't change. Have you had that experience? I did. And the reality of that was I thought, in fact, I really thought I wanted to change. But then I noticed after a while that they, I didn't really want to change. Now, that sounds strange, but the truth is there's a part of us, deep inside of us, that doesn't want to change. As a hypnotist, I can tell you that's the part of the brain that once it forms a belief, it doesn't want to change that belief. And everything in us, the critical factor of the conscious mind, all those things that I could talk about as a hypnotist all day, but all those things keep us from changing our beliefs. And our beliefs is what make up us and how we feel about things. So the truth is, we have resistance to change within us, built in. It's just part of who we are. That's why it's so hard to change. Even though you think you're going to change, even though you think you want to change, even though you're unhappy with your circumstances, you still find you can't change. Sound familiar? So, what I'm going to work with you today on is resistance to change and show you how you can eliminate the, the, the inner problem, the inner resistance to changing your life. And then after that, it's a clear board. You can do whatever you need to do with EFT and clear anything. But the first core issue to be done and to be taken care of is resistance to change. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to start by tapping. I, I'm going to assume that you already know how to tap or right, do EFT. And if you don't, then you can go to tedrobinson.com and check on uh, EFT and you'll find a whole downloadable, reproducible uh, website there that shows you, or page is a website that'll show you how to do EFT. Or you'll be able to see my other uh, YouTube um, that shows you how to do EFT. And it's comprehensive, by the way. So here we go. This is the way we start the setup. We say, even though I may have some resistance to change, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Now, by saying I may have, that allows the conscious part of us to say, well, maybe I do. So that's a little easier for most people to accept. After we've done it the first time, we say, even though I think I have some resistance to change, I love and accept myself nonetheless. Again, we're deepening the resistance issue. The third time is, I know I have some resistance to change, but I love and accept myself nonetheless. And that way, you've now made it complete. You do recognize that you have some resistance to change, and you're now going to address it. The way we address it, and just follow what I do now, we say, I may have some resistance to change. I just might have some resistance to change. I know I have some resistance to change, but it can't be a whole lot. I came here to do this, didn't I? I mean, I really want to change. I think I do, at least. I know I want to change. This is the collarbone point. This is a really important spot, by the way, these two little points right here. Don't forget them. The collarbone point. I know I have some resistance to change. Under the armpit, right over here for ladies, right at the bra strap, and midway on the body. For men, it's just about at four inches down below the armpit. And you say, I, I know I have some resistance to change. The top of the head is just like a halo. You just go around the top of the head and you say, I must have resistance to change or I would have changed already. I'm afraid of change. I don't really like change. I wish I could change, but I can't. I don't think I'm ever going to change. Why can't I change? I know I'm never going to change. I don't really want to change. That's the truth. I don't want to change. If I wanted to change, I would have done it long ago. So part of me doesn't want to change. I don't want to change. How do you like that? I don't want to change. I'm not going to change no matter what you say. I'm not going to change. I refuse to change. I won't change. How do you like that? I can't change. I wish I could, but I can't. All this resistance to change. All this resistance to change. Now when you're doing that, you can slip those words in real quickly in between mine, or you can say them as I say them, or you can just slow your tape down and do it that way. Whatever way you like, those are the words you want to use for resistance to change. And once you do that, you should feel a reduction in the resistance to change. Now before you start that, and I should have said that right up front, you normally set what's called a SUD, a Subjective Understanding of Distress Scale, S-U-D-S. -S. And that simply means that each of us has different levels within us of resistance or, or different uh, levels of discomfort, pain, so to speak. 
And because we all have different pain thresholds, we use a subjective index. And so for one person, they might be feeling an eight, another person might be feeling a 10, another a six. 10 is the most, by the way, zero is nothing. You can't access it at all. So you normally set a suds first, and once you've set it, then you check on it later on to see if it's changed at all. Usually it'll come down after the first level. And here's what happens if it's come down from an eight down to a six or any other number down below a six. You say, even though I've had some re reduction in this, in this uh, level, I still have more to do. Even though I've had some reduction, I still have more to do. That would be you saying it. You say, even though I've had some re reduction in my resistance to change, I love and accept myself nonetheless, even though, and you know how to say the rest. So now we're gonna do the, the, the uh, continuation where we say, I've had some reduction in this issue, but there's still more to go. I've had some reduction in this issue, but there's still more to go. I really wish I could change this. I really wish I could change this, but I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. Actually, I think I can, because I just did reduce it somewhat. Well, maybe I can't. I don't know. And this is one of the things we do. We do both sides of the equation. I can change. No, I can't. I can change. I know I can. I'm not so sure I can change. I wish I could change. I know I could change. I'm not so sure I can change. I'm positive I can change. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm confused. I have a lot of resistance to change. All this resistance to change. And that's the second round when your, when your reduction has come down a little bit. Now, what you may find is you get down to about a three. A three level is a great level for everybody because you do what's, what I call the eye ladder. Some call it other things. I just call it the eye ladder because it makes more sense to me. And that is where you simply take and you put your eyes up as high as you possibly can get and in six steps you bring it down to the bottom. Top to bottom all the way. And the whole time you're going to tap right here in this little hollow right between where the pinky finger bone is in the back of your hand and the ring finger bone. There's a little hollow right in there and you just tap on that consistently. That's called the nine gamut point by the way. Well, be, you'll see more about that in other videos. And you say all remaining resistance to change. You notice my eyes are at the very top. One step down, all remaining resistance to change. 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 Notice my eyes are all the way down as far as I can get them and my head is staying upright. You always want to keep your head still. You don't want to be looking down like this. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose is to get the eyes all the way down and all the way up and every six set, uh, the six steps in between. Now, when you take and check that again, you should be at a zero because the, anytime you're at a three or less and you do the eye ladder, generally you're gonna find that it's done. It's done. If you don't get it all the way down, if there's still a little bit of it left there, do it again. All remiss, remaining uh, resistance to change. All remaining resistance to change, et cetera, right on through. And that should do it. Two times is usually going to do it. If it doesn't do it, go back and do the entire setup and, pre and procedure again, and that'll take care of it. Once you've done resistance to change, that's the key to everything else. So I start every single uh, personal private session I do with people, and I do every borrowing benefits group I do with people, and every teaching seminar I do with people with resistance to change because it eliminates resistance to change, which is what stops us from learning, stops us from changing, and stops us from living our life.